Hello, in this video I'm going to be installing a Cooler Master Hyper 212X into an AMD AM3 Plus socket. But if you don't have an AM3 Plus socket, this video will also show you pretty much how to install it with a few minor differences. If you want to check out my other video on the review of the Hyper 212X, It'll be down in the description and probably at the end of this video and it shows the temperature difference between the stock cooler and the 212X. Oh drats. Already come into a problem. I just pulled off the back panel here and behind the motherboard there's normally a bit of a cutout and then the little mounting plate that you put on the back you should just be able to put through here and turns out <laughs> there's no cutout so I think I'm gonna have to take the motherboard out oh I really didn't want to take this motherboard out first things first to get the motherboard out, we have to pull out the graphics card, Wi-Fi card, at least in my case, uh, and undo all the power cables and different cables connected to the motherboard in order to get it out. And then once everything is detached from the motherboard, then we have to undo all the screws attaching the motherboard to the case, and then we'll just be able to pull it out. Now, time to pull this monstrosity off. This very loud monstrosity. Now, I initially attached this heatsink to this CPU about seven or eight years ago. <laughs> Since then, I've never pulled it off and never changed the thermal paste. Now the next thing we have to do is clean off the old thermal paste. Do not just reapply thermal paste onto the old stuff. Now to do that, I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol, or however you pronounce that, and probably coffee filters I hear are the best thing to do this. However, I'm not using that. I'm using, I don't even know what these are called. Um, but they're pretty much lint free type things. You can get them from supermarket pretty cheap Normally on a roll for next to nothing um, So I'm using that and the isopropyl alcohol Mmm, smells nice Not really <coughs> Comes off like a hot knife through butter. Look at my beautiful nice clean AMD CPU there now. You can practically eat dinner off it. Now the next thing in the process is pulling off the original factory plastic mount here for the factory cooler and at the same time this back plate here is going to drop off. And it's as simple as just undoing four screws. Oh that was loose. And we are off. Then the back plate here will just come off, like so. We have a little metal backing plate here, and that is going to go on the back here, like so. So the holes line up, and then we're going to grab our hardware kit. And we have the bigger black screwy type bolts here, and you may be wondering what these little plastic spaces are, well these, they go on the end of it, so you don't have metal touching the motherboard. And once you put it on, it's going to look something like this, and then they are going to go through the holes and then into the back plate here. Then we have the nuts here that are going to go onto the back. I'll just get the nut on there to get it started. Just 
so they don't fall out. Alright, pretty, pretty much got them all started now. So now it's just time to tighten them up. Like so. So, have a look at that. Now they do provide this little thing with a Phillips head top that just goes on over there and you can do it up. Might need to uh, do it from the back a little bit. They don't need to be too tight. They just need to be tight enough. Now before you go any further, I do recommend probably taking this fan off before you go and mount the heatsink. It's as simple as just lifting these tabs on the side here. And voila. So we're gonna get our Cooler Master Thermal Paste here. Up to you if you want to use this. Or if you have some of your own. Gonna make a little bit of a dollop there. That's probably a bit too much maybe. <laughs> Came out much faster than I thought. Make sure to take the sticker off the bottom there. And we're going to try and put it evenly as possible on there. Looks pretty even to me. We're going to start screwing one corner down just a little bit. And then don't go to this side. Go to do it in like a X type formation. It is quite tight to try and get to these mounting spots. If you are struggling for space a little bit like I am here with the AM3 socket, you can get this. And by putting it on and at a little bit of an angle, you can actually get to it much easier. Now you can get the Phillips head in there. But look at that. We now have a fully mounted heatsink. Now I'm not going to put on the fan just yet because we still have to get this back in the case. So that's probably a little easier to do without this on. So let's try get this back in and hope I can get it in with, <laughs> without having to take this off. This is one heavy case. Oh, even without a motherboard and CPU in it. Now time to screw the motherboard back down. Screw it down corner to corner. Now to plug everything back in. Gotta put power to the graphics card. We need to put power to the motherboard now. Now with the fan, you either have two choices. You can mount it at the front or the back. But one thing to keep in mind, whether you mount it at the front or back, is on these fans, let me see where it is, they have arrows in which direction all the air goes. So the way my case is set up, is it's pulling in air from the front and then it's coming all the way out the back. So if I was to put this fan at the back, according to these little arrows here, I would be pulling air in from the front and then this would be pushing air back to the front and then yet <laughs> there's a fan behind it sucking air out the back. So if you want to mount it at the back, you have to undo these tabs here, undo the screws, turn the fan around, and then mount it on the back. However, I think I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to mount it at the front, and we'll be all sweet. The fan installs very simply. The easiest way to get it on is just click on one side, and then push on the other, and it just clicks on like that. Make sure you put in the power cable. And then, voila, 
fully mounted with the fan ready to extract some heat. So now just have to connect it all back up. Oh, I thank you for watching everybody. That's about it for this video. Hit that like button if you liked it. Subscribe for more videos and a bit more of me. And also if you'd like to see my review of the Cooler Master Hyper 212X, well it's down in the description and at the end of this video. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.